everybody, and welcome. Today, we are going to be doing some upcycling of trash that you might be collecting at home. So I'm Michelle Lukey. I'm the Director of Environmental Stewardship for the Bronx River Alliance, and welcome. So if you're like me, which I hope you are, because uh, what I try to do in my daily life is try to consume as little as possible. However, uh, given the pandemic um, and being trying to support local restaurants, um, I've been getting a lot of delivery. And what happens with delivery is you get a lot of extra little plastic things like little to-go containers of um, for different condiments and things, or maybe a, a, a little salad. Um, and then we always have the ubiquitous plastic egg cartons if you haven't switched to cardboard. So the kind I try to buy are cardboard, but sometimes you don't always have that luxury because um, I do try to still have sustainably uh, produced eggs. Um, and barring having chickens in my backyard, this is a, uh, uh, you have to get it at the store. So, so what we're doing today is we're really talking about upcycling some of our trash and, and how we do that. So why do we care about trash at the Bronx River Alliance? Well, because a lot of that trash ends up getting into our parks that are uh, along the river, but also within the river itself. And so we have a project called Project Waste, and waste is an acronym. It stands for Waterway and Street Trash Elimination. Uh, and so we are really analyzing the trash that we find in the Bronx River and in the parks all along the Bronx River. And what we find is it's really made up of single use plastic items. So um, plastic utensils and plastic to go containers and things. So today we wanted to show you just some creative things that you can do to turn your trash into something beautiful. Um, and we're especially interested, we're gonna be creating a holiday wreath um, and sustainability is particularly important around the holidays because as consumers, we actually create 25% more trash during the holidays than we do during the rest of the year. And that amounts to about 25 million tons or a million extra tons per week. So we just want you to think about some other ways that you can upcycle your trash. So one of the things that I'm gonna be using today is an old pie tin from my Thanksgiving pie. Um, another thing that I'm going to be doing to line my baking sheet is I'm using foil that was wrapped around my garlic naan because I love Indian food. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is um, we are going to cut up our, um, our plastic egg carton and a bits in there. Um, and so first thing I'm gonna do is with a sturdy scissors, uh, if you are following along at home, make sure that you have adult supervision if scissors is still a, uh, a new sort of skill for you or because, because sometimes cutting through the heavy plastic can, can be hard on your hands. Um, and so what you wanna just do is cut around, you can see here, I'll do it closer to this. You can just cut around the top and now this one it goes down so I'm just gonna follow those sorry I've been making terrible noises and the other thing that you want to do also if you're following along at home um, please alert an adult if you are not an adult um, that we need to use the oven and it might be a little stinky. So if you can open a window. Um, so, and then I'm just gonna show you what I did. So now I have one complete egg cup that's cut off from the rest of them. Um, and so if you want to follow along at home um, or if you are following along later and you want to do this, go ahead and preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm a scientist. I should know what that is in Celsius, but I don't. I'm sorry. Um, 
So that mine is hot, so that's really good. Um, and if you are following along, please make sure people know that you're going to be handling hot things. Um, and they do get a little bit hot when you work with them. So I'm gonna do one, finish this last one. Okay, so like they, here, here's another rescued egg cup. So like they do in cooking shows, I already have some other ones already cut here. So the next thing we need to do is we need to paint them. And I, unlike the esteemed, the, the, uh, the, the esteemable Amber, who is our education coordinator, she is an actual artist. So she does beautiful painting. I am not an artist. So my painting is sketchy at best. However, it's not really important that you're a good painter for this um, because, and I'll show you when it happens, when we, um, when we shrink these, um, the, the paint kind of shrinks together. So it's really less important how well you paint it. Um, and so my theme so far is, um, I'm kind of doing a fall theme. So yellows, oranges, reds. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is I take my little paintbrush. Oh, I should show you. I have a set of just acrylic paints, just acrylic craft paints that I got at the craft store. Um, and I'm just gonna take my paint and just sort of Bring it up the sides. Um, and for a cool, whoopsies, for a cooler sort of flower effect, what I have found here, oh, there's where I'll do it, is you sort of go heavier at the bottom and just kind of let it, let it be lighter as you get to the edges and it gives more of a petal effect. But you kind of want to cover all of it because it just sort of looks better on the finished product. And how do I know that? Because I've already done a lot of these. Because we wanna make sure that you see how to do the whole process. So, so basically I just fill in all the yellow and I'm kind of leaving that middle part. I'll fill it in a little bit more because I'm gonna put a, a, a black dot in the middle. So I am going to make couple more yellows. Uh, and then the important thing to do is to let it dry a little bit um, before we stick it in the oven. So we, uh, I've also been experimenting with other different types of the to-go plastics. And that's been really um, a lot of fun because some of them change their composition. So this was a to-go cup that I just sort of cut strips in the sides. And I'm gonna do one of these later so you can see, but I turned it into a sunflower, um, but it's, it's thick and it, these do move. So you could use it as like a pin. Um, you could put it in your hair if you wanted to as like a little bow. You could put it on top of a present as like a little present topper. Um, and you could put, you could make it more cupped if you wanted to, but I wanted this one to be flat. Um, the other thing you can do, maybe not all of you at home are as dreadfully crafty as I am, but a hole puncher, um, if you hole punch it before you shrink it, uh, you still get a decent hole um, and you can create an ornament. So you could create your own ornaments personalized out of your excess plastic. Um, so those were my yellows. And I wanna show you the red because I think the red is really, really pretty. Uh, and I just have a little, I just have a little thing of water. Yet again, another to-go container. These, 
these bring me salsa, these bring me guacamole, these bring me um, tamarind sauce from my Indian, um, and they're not recyclable. And so this is why instead of trying to recycle it, we are just trying to upcycle it instead. So, so a lot of times you hear about the, the three R's, right? Reduce, reuse, recycle. Reduce is obvious. That means just, you know, um, try to use less of your, uh, of whatever it is. Um, reuse is just sort of um, in your own house. Like how can you just use it over and over and over again? So if a plastic bag comes into my house, it gets used until it either smells or it's got holes in it and then it gets recycled. Um, you can recycle bags at most grocery stores. So I just keep a bag of bags and then when they're done, that's where all my, my sort of that level of um, that thickness of plastic, that's where it ultimately all goes. Um, and then the last R that everybody's familiar with is the recycle. But there's more R's than, than that. And so one of them that we really love is the refuse. So not to be confused with refuse, which is another way to say garbage. But if you refuse something, that means that you're saying, no, thank you. I don't want the straw when you buy a drink at the bodega or, um, or you see something that you want, but it has a lot of packaging on it. And you say, you know what? I don't actually need that product, or I'm going to look for a similar product with less packaging. I know there's a lot of privilege associated with that because sometimes it's more expensive to get it without packaging. Sometimes it takes more steps. So I definitely know that it's, it's a process. It's not something that all of a sudden we all woke up one day and said, I'm going to be the most sustainable person ever. And magically we were. It's, it's something that we've all been working at for a very, very long time. Personally, I've been doing it, you know, my whole life of trying to figure out how can I use less. Um, but there are some more R's besides just refuse. There's also repair. So if your clothing has a tear in it or a patch, you know, you can put a patch on it or you can sew. Knowing how to sew is a very, very good life skill because then you can fix things. And so you don't have to get a new one you can keep the same one that you have. Um, what am I missing? Refuse, repair. Uh, repurpose, thank you, Amber. And that is exactly what we're doing today, which is why I was like, I know it's what we're doing right now, but upcycling doesn't start with an R. Repurpose, so that's exactly what we're doing. And so I'm gonna go, to assume that my paint is dry and I'm going to go give these their little black dot that they deserve. And so I'm just going to do a little black dot. So you see, I'm not a good painter, but that is not the point of this at all. It is just about giving the illusion that it is a flower. So now we're about to get to the really fun part. Now we're gonna to get to the melting part. And the melting is a little tricky. I will tell you this, there is a learning curve. Um, and what I have found, your oven temperature may be a little bit different than mine. And so it may work a little bit differently. But what I have found is that um, I kind of, I can manage the melt um, by sort of putting the pan in and out of the oven. So I'll show you what I mean. So what I'm gonna do, my oven is hot. It's been preheating for a little while. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull that, um, that shelf out. Oh, I should say, this is a little oven mitt or a little pot holder that I made out of a t-shirt. So I had a t-shirt that I didn't want anymore. Um, and I cut strips out of it and I made t-shirt yarn and then I weave, wove it, weaved it. I wove, I know that's correct. I wove a little pot holder. Um, and so this is my little pot holder that I use. Um, and so what we're gonna do is 
next we have our little pan of flowers and I'm going to put them in the oven and they they start to catch pretty quickly. Oh, you can't see me very well. They start to catch pretty quickly. And so because they're flowers, I kind of, so, so see this one has already started to melt. Um, I kind of want to control how they melt. That one started to get away from me. Ooh, this one's, this one's going great. And then this one is getting a little away from me. This one's perfect now. And that one looks good. Okay, great. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull these. Shut my oven door. Sorry for the loud noise. And so what I have now are melted flowers. And they all kind of just shrunk. That's why I say, don't go, don't put it in the oven all the way and close the door because it'll just go whoop on itself. And so then you can't really control how it melts. So that is your base. And like on any good cooking show, I, uh, I have already created a whole bunch of these which is how I know how to control them a little bit better. So I have a whole bin of yellows, a bin of oranges of different shades, and then I have a whole bunch of reds because I really like the reds because they sort of look like a poppy. Um, even though the California poppy is orange, um, I, just, I just think that these are lovely. And so now what I am doing is I'm going to plug in my hot glue gun. So again, if you are, if you do not have an adult handy, please get your adult handy before you start using a hot glue gun. And I'm gonna grab a little bit more foil to put under my work surface. I'll show you my work surface in a second. And so what we're gonna do now is we can go ahead and start creating the wreath using these as our uh, raw materials. So I've got my hot glue gun heating up. And what we're using as a base is this big ring that I found, which was um, part of a lampshade. So there's the top part of the lampshade that kind of has that, that spoke in the middle that kind of sits on the lamp. And then there's the bottom half. So this is the bottom half of the lampshade. I still have the top half of the lampshade and I will still, um, it will still someday jump into a different project. My plan for that is actually to use pop tops, you know, from a, from a soda can, the little metal top, you can cut them and splice them and hang them in a certain way that, that it creates a sheet. Actually, I can show you. It creates this effect. So I actually made a, a necktie. Um, out of it because I thought it was really clever. Um, and so that's what I will eventually make the lampshade out of, but that's not gonna happen for a while. So I can repurpose this multiple times. So for now, what it's gonna be is it's gonna be my wreath base. And so the, the goal now is then to take the little flowers that we've made and glue them around the base of the, um, onto the, onto that base. My hot glue gun is still warming up. So we are not going to be gluing anything yet. So in the interim, I think I'm going to show you how to make, um, that, this, the sunflower. I've got a case of the drop seeds. 
So it's already kind of cracked because it cracks pretty easily. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just elongate those cracks all the way down. So you want it to kind of look like petals. And if you wanted to, you could get a lot fancier with this. So I'm just kind of giving you um, a sketch of what you could do. And then you can go ahead and be as creative as you want with this. Um, if you've ever heard of shrinky dinks, that's exactly what we're doing here. I made, um, well, this was a little cloud that I made. And again, that was one of these sort of to-go containers. And so it, it sort of flattened itself out because I, I also pushed it down. And then this is like a drink lid. Um, and it turned white when I, when I shrank it. Um, and so that's what I was discovering the, um, uh, that's what I was discovering as I was doing it. So, so why are we doing this? Besides the fact that you could create something fun for a gift maybe for somebody in your life. Um, and you can give them an upcycled holiday present. The other thing is, is that the Bronx River Alliance right now is having a contest and it's called Earth Art. So hashtag Earth Art uh, on all of our social media. So we would love to see what you're doing with these types of, uh, of items. What did you do to um, create some Earth Art? We have some examples and last week, Amber did a really great job on how to make wreaths out of uh, toilet paper tubes, because I'm sure we all have extra toilet paper tubes around the house. Well, some of us do if we've been saving toilet paper tubes, which we have because you can do so many amazing crafts with it. Um, and, uh, and then she also did salsa jar painting um, because like I said, she's an artist. And so when she paints things, you actually want it to be painted. And when I paint it, it's just to make it a color. Um, but that's fine, we all have our skills. Mine is just not with a paintbrush. I'm decent with scissors, which is I think why I've been excited about this one because I don't have to do much painting and I can do mostly just cutting. Um, and I love a hot glue gun, don't get me wrong. Um, so yeah, so we would love to see your entries uh, in the contest. So hit us up on social media and hashtag it with, uh, with hashtag earth art and, um, and, and show us what you've been up to, show us what you're doing. So again, I'm just sort of, because sunflowers aren't really solid centers. I just kind of want it to have the illusion of being a sunflower. And, uh, and it's gonna shrink when I put it in the oven anyway. So here we go. Hot glue gun is almost ready. So in the meantime, we're just gonna throw, oops, I don't wanna put that straight on my pan. I have been eating a lot of naan, so there's a lot of foil under the table. Not that that's where it stays, it's just for this purpose. That was my arrangement. Okay, so again, we're, I'm sort of watching it melt, and I kind of want it to fan out a little bit. So I keep kind of going like this on the top so that as it's melting, um, and this one melts differently than the, um, than the egg carton. The egg carton went really fast because it's such a thinner plastic. This is a different type of plastic. Um, and so it melts very, very differently. Ooh, that's fun. Oh, it's curling down in a really cool way. Do that on all of them. Do that. Yeah. Oops, you went the wrong way. No, 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 no. Oh. Ouch. That's hot. See, this is why you should always have adult supervision. 
clearly I need adult supervision. But I have adult supervision. Amber is my adult supervision. Melted. Melted. Got one more little pesky side that doesn't want to melt like the others. Now, that is what I wanted you to look like. And so we have a cute little sunflower, minus the one little side that didn't want to melt like the rest of them. But they all kind of curled up like that. So it makes a little pretty little flower. I'll have to deal with that side later. Um, anyway, okay, great. Our hot glue is hot now. So what I'm going to do is because I have three different colors, I have yellow, orange, and red. Um, I'm going to arrange them kind of, uh, I don't want to do them in clumps. I want to sort of disperse the colors all over. So I'm just going to start gluing. Actually, make these closer. I'm just going to start gluing the, maybe it's because it's on low. Well, it's getting there. Okay, not quite yet. Um, what else can I tell you about earth art? We're really excited to see what you have. Um, it doesn't have to be a holiday present. It could be anything. Um, you feel free to keep it for yourself. You don't have to just gift it to other people. Um, but one of the things that I really like about gifting people upcycled things is that it makes them look at garbage a little bit differently. And it makes them think about their waste a little bit differently. So um, definitely through this pandemic, I have definitely looked at my garbage going, huh, what can I do to do to, to make less waste? So one of the things that I really like is cottage cheese, um, but it comes in plastic tubs. And I got tired of having these plastic tubs. And yeah, they might be recyclable, but I'm still causing um, plastic to be created in order to consume that item. So I looked up and actually it's not hard to make cottage cheese at all. You just put a little bit of white vinegar into milk and it curdles itself and you squeeze it out and you salt it and that's it. It's super, super easy. So ever since I learned that, I've been making my own cottage cheese and so therefore I'm not wasting that plastic anymore. So these are the kinds of things that, you know, as you start, um, but obviously that wasn't the first thing I did. That was, that was something that I've more recently done and, and I've always been very conscious of, of trash. So, so don't be hard on yourself once you start looking at your trash, if you're like, oh my gosh, there's a lot of plastic in here. It's just an opportunity to do better. And it's just an opportunity to use less waste. And so as we become more um, familiar with what our consumption patterns are, then we can change it, right? So until we know, we can't really do anything about it. So I put some hot glue on here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just stick it to my frame. And yeah, maybe I'll bring it here. here. That's much better. That way I don't have to turn away from you every time I want to. Um, so are folks out there following along and, and cutting and uh, painting their own? Or are you just enjoying learning how to do it for a later date? Are there any questions out there in the audience world? If you're just tuning in, we are making uh, holiday wreaths um, out of egg cartons that we have painted and are now gluing onto um, an old, um, Whatchamacallit? Lampshade, lampshade ring. Forgot my noun for a second, sorry about that. My hot glue is 
coming out like molasses right now. And it's not sticking all that well because it wasn't that hot. Hot glue is a lot of fun, but it can be a little bit dangerous. My mom did a lot of hot glue when I was little. And I didn't know it was called hot melt glue. She has a, I'm from the Midwest. She has a, a she's from Chicago area. So that white substance that comes out of cows that I was telling you, you can make cottage cheese out of. Most people call it milk. Sorry, mom. She calls it milk, like with an E. So when she said hot melt glue, I thought she was saying hot milk glue. And so for, for years and years and years, I thought it was called hot milk glue. And then she finally corrected me and said, no, it's melt. And I said, well, that's the way you say milk. So how was I supposed to know? Um, but there were definitely times when I was little and I would run into the little like piles of um, hot glue on the paper plate or whatever that she was um, that she was using to catch the glue and I would, I would pick it off and play with it. And sometimes it was still hot. And when that goes underneath your fingernail, I can burn. So be careful, but it's a lot of fun, a lot of great applications for hot glue. A hot glue gun is a very basic craft, craft supply. And I highly recommend it because you can do lots and lots of fun things with it. So it's just the beginning. But so far, oops, can't see very well. Here you go. So, so far I have a little line uh, around. And what I'm thinking is, is that I actually want to put more, um, take some plastic, like the base of this egg carton. I'm going to take the paper out of it. I'm going to use it to back my wreath so that I can build it out wider than just one row. So rather than gluing, rather than gluing the, um, the flowers only onto the bar, uh, I'm going to glue it onto some more plastic so that we can get a little bit of a wider, wider wreath. And I don't think we need to, to, um, I don't think we need to melt this. We can just just use the scissors, cut it out. Plastic ASMR. Give Amber credit for that one. That was that was her comment. I want to give credit where credit is due. I thought it was funny. Okay, so we have some, some strips that I'm just going to go ahead and, um, and glue behind. We can just get a little bit, actually, no, I don't like the edges because they're ridged. They've got bumps on them. So then if I put it behind, my wreath isn't going to lay flat against the wall, which is what I want it to do. So I'm just going to cut So this is generally the arc of well, you can't really see it because it's clear, but this is generally the arc of, of what I'm working on. So I want to make sure that the sides are removed. And remember, unfortunately, all of the little pieces that we cut off of this, um, if it's not recyclable plastic, then these are not recyclable. And so that becomes waste. So there is some waste associated with, um, with, the, with the process. It's not, but you are saving it from, um, from the landfill in general, so. Oh, I took it off the foil and all of my, all of my flowers fell off. Okay. Well then it really needs a vacuum. 
I troubleshot everything except actually putting it on the wreath before this. So that'll teach me. Okay. So now what I have is I have a back. And now I'm going to glue my flowers. I'm going to glue the back onto the, the ring. And I'm going to glue the flowers then onto the ring and the back. So the thing I was saying about the unrecyclable plastic then is the pieces. And that's a project that we're working on too at the Bronx River Alliance. There's, um, as part of our Project Waste, Project Waste kind of looks at the big plastic, but there's also the microplastic. And those are all the little pieces that, um, of larger plastics that break down but then also really microscopic um, pieces of plastic that come off of our clothing. So I know for me especially, um, I live in yoga pants now um, because they're so comfortable and uh, nobody sees me from the waist down anymore. So, um, but yoga pants are made with with nylon and rayon or, or other spandex, other synthetic fabrics. And so with that come the little pieces of plastic that actually come off of the clothing uh, in the wash. And so we are looking at um, the microplastics that we find in the water. And it's not just from our wash that it gets it's actually, um, studies are showing that, that microplastics are getting into our waterways um, through the air. That, you know, maybe your laundry, when it, when it um, exhausts, it puts microplastics into the air. And so those are, are getting rained into the system, um, like when it rains. And, uh, and that is getting into our waterways. So we're trying to figure out ways that we can reduce the amount of microplastics that are coming out of our communities. So um, some ways to do that is there's special bags that you can put your, your clothing into that will catch your microplastics and your microfibers. Um, or there's other sort of things that you can put in the washing machine itself that will trap them as you're doing laundry. Um, so lots of different ways to be sustainable. Like I said, there's, um, uh, there is some, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought because I cannot wait to show you this. It's turning out very pretty. No, stay on this instead of that. Sticking to the foil, which is funny because I thought it wouldn't stick to the foil but the foil is sticking. So maybe don't use foil. That would be my suggestion. It's oh, too bad. I'm gonna have to find a new workaround for that one. Anyway, this is where we are so far. So this is, so um, if you've just joined us, what we're doing today is we are upcycling um, plastic egg cartons, and we're, we're making a holiday wreath. And so I have painted them, cut them out, uh, cut out, you know, each of the little cups or so out of the um, egg cartons, and then have painted them in different fall colors, and am now gluing them onto um, this, this ring, which actually comes from an old lampshade that um, the fabric had disintegrated, but I liked, I liked the size of the lampshade. So took the fabric off and, and kept the innards and I'm um, making a, a holiday wreath out of this. So I'm working around the outside um, and gluing it onto it. Oh, I think I was telling you about microplastics. That's what I was doing. So microplastics, we have a, we are looking at 
how many microplastics we're actually seeing in the river. So that's again, part of our project waste, our waterway and street trash elimination project where we get community members like you who wanna come out and help us figure out what kind of trash are we seeing in the river. Um, and so microplastics is another kind of trash that we're seeing in the river. And um, we want to, we want to try to reduce the amount of trash that's going into the server. Oopsies. So one of the ways to do that is um, I feel a little bit like the Swedish chef who just kind of like throws things around and never really ends up making anything. So I hope I'm better than the Swedish chef in that there's something at the end of this, um, even if we don't quite finish it in time. Um, but this is all part of, this is to get your, your creative juices flowing because we are having a competition right now called Earth Art. So hashtag Earth Art. Um, we would love to see your designs and, and what, what you might be working on and your creative ways of upcycling trash. So you have seen my dirty little secret that I have eaten a lot of delivery. I call it supporting restaurants, um, supporting my local restaurants, and also because I didn't feel like cooking. Um, but what ends up happening is you get a lot of that to-go garbage. And so what do you do with your to-go containers? And so that's really what we're looking at today is creative ways that we can upcycle some of our trash. Um, and, and not just creative ways, but creative and useful and also beautiful. So that's what we are working on today. And I am just hot gluing, and burning my fingers. Um, once again, if you're just joining us, uh, we are we. So how we um, created all of these egg cup flowers is by first painting them. I just have some acrylic paints here. Um, and I am not a painter, so don't be intimidated by that. There is no artist artistry uh, required. All I did was just basically put some paint in and then a little black dot in the middle. Um, you put it into a hot oven at 350. I don't close the door because then you can't really control how it melts. Um, mm. What do you think, Amber? Should I should I melt another one? Do we have new people who didn't see how they melted? Yeah. Okay. Great. So I will um, I will go over. We've got my little. Hmm. I really like the red ones, so I'm going to do some more red ones. They're my favorite. So I just take a little paint on my egg cup that I've already cut out. And what I've been doing is just sort of heavier towards the base and sort of lighter as you drag it out. Not really super important, but just aesthetically, it kind of makes it look more like a petal. kind of get, even in when they have little nooks and crannies, uh, kind of get in there and, and do that. You just kind of want to cover it. It's really not important to paint it well. Um, I'm going to do this one. I haven't done one of these yet. This is from um, Mochi Ice Cream. I don't know if you all are familiar with Mochi. It's an Asian dessert. I think it's the most delicious thing ever but it comes in these little plastic cups. So I have a hard time justifying it because it creates plastic and it's not recyclable plastic. So, so I've decided to upcycle it instead. So we're just gonna do these two just because you don't want me to stand here and paint some more. Um, and then I switch to my black, and give it a little black dot in the middle. Okay. 
the little black, oh, can you see that? The little black dot? Oh, you know what? I could turn my overhead light on. And I bet you'd be able to see me a lot better. Oh, I should have done that sooner, sorry. We're just, uh, I'm just illuminated by my plant light right now. There we go, there's that guy. Great. My brush. And we're going to, so I just put it on my tray and I put it on some foil. Um, and like I've explained before, my foil is also an upside, is a, is a reuse. It's my, it's from my Indian food, from non. And so then you just put it in the oven and you see, I don't close the door because this way I can kind of watch how it melts <clears throat> because I want it to kind of have a, a petal effect. So, so my, my egg cup one has just started to go and when it goes, it kind of goes on its own. And so I'm just sort of encouraging this side, just kind of encouraging it to, okay. It sort of has a mind of its own, but you can kind of control it a little bit. So it just made a nice little puppy. And then the mochi one, this one's having a little, different plastic oh oh it's kind of cool though interesting it is not behaving like the other ones oh it's shrinking though that's cool this one looks a lot more petal like because it's because it's a white background so that one's fun Yeah, it's not, ooh, oh wait, yeah it is. Oh, it just needed more heat. Oh, this one's really neat. This one looks more like a Gerber. I like it. I'm not going to use it in the wreath, but I really like it. That's good to know. Oh, whoa. Okay. Sorry, I'm having a whole little moment over here. It's really doing some cool things. It's super shrinking down and it's flattening out kind of like the to-go cups we're doing. I like it. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave it just like that. So this one melted way different than the other ones, but I really like how it turned out. So it's kind of, it's flattened, but it really made a really pretty flower. That's why all the oohs and ahs over there, I'm sorry that you couldn't watch the process with me, but yeah, I really like the result of that. That one's super pretty. That could absolutely be a present topper. If you attach like a little ribbon or something to it, it could be a cute little flower in the middle. So, so yeah, so there's lots of options here. Um, and if you missed it before, a, um, a to-go cup, not this size. I'll show you which size. This size of like a to-go cup from like a salsa or tamarind sauce or something like that, depending on what kind of delivery you get, turned into um, a sunflower like this. And where's my other sunflower that I did? Yeah. Well, here it is. And then this one actually curled up in a really cute way, minus the one I'm holding on to. Uh, and that was also a little to-go cup. So these are just ideas that you have for repurposing um, any of these kind of to-go containers. Um, so we're not gonna be able to finish gluing this wreath today, 
uh, because there's still a lot more to go, but we will post it on our Instagram so you can see what the finished result is gonna look like. Um, I'm probably gonna put some ribbon or maybe some raffia on here. I haven't quite determined what I'm gonna do yet, but we will post it. But more importantly than looking at what we've done, we wanna see what you've done. So we wanna see your projects. So hashtag us at hashtag earth art and show us how you upcycle some of the excess things that you've accumulated and what you might be making for holiday presents. And remember, reusing is so important at the holidays. Think about things like brown paper. Um, a lot of times people are using uh, crumpled up brown paper as um, shipping packaging instead of using like styrofoam peanuts or things like that. Think about whether or not you can flatten that out and maybe decorate that in a certain way and use that as wrapping paper this year. And then it's easily recyclable at the end. It doesn't have any additives that are going to be bad for the environment. And people get personalized wrapping. And then maybe you put on a little flower like that that you made from an egg carton. So we'd love to see what you do. Um, hashtag us at Earth Art. And um, we hope you enjoyed it. We hope that this got your creative juices flowing and we can't wait to see your finished product. Thanks so much.